In this video, I will show you how to determine whether you've picked the best model to fit your data, linear, quadratic, or exponential. This is called competing function model validation, and it is AP Precalculus Topic 2.6. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. In AP Precalculus, you will often be asked to decide and justify whether a linear model, a quadratic model, or an exponential model will be best for a given set of data. But how do you decide? You're going to use a linear model when the data reveals a relatively constant rate of change. For example, in this data, for equal length input value intervals, the output value change is always about 2. And obviously, if the data points form a line shape, there's a good chance we need a linear model. We will use a quadratic model when the rates of change are increasing or decreasing at a relatively constant rate. In this example, we can tell that the rates of change are increasing at a relatively constant rate by looking at the second differences over equal length input value intervals. Notice that the second differences of the output values are all near 3. Another indication that we need a quadratic model is when the data forms a U-shape, whether right side up or upside down. We can tell that we need an exponential model when the output values are roughly proportional. We know that output values are proportional when successive values have a roughly constant ratio over equal length input value intervals. This means that each successive output is approximately the result of repeated multiplication. Example 1. Selected values from several functions are given in the tables below. Sketch the scatter plot for each table, then determine if a linear, quadratic, or exponential model is appropriate. Here's the scatter plot for Part A. I need you to learn how to use College Board vocabulary. You can't just say linear because, well, it's obviously linear. You have to say a linear model is best because the output values have a roughly constant rate of change for equal length input value intervals. Here's the scatter plot for Part B. You can say a quadratic model is best because the output values increase and then decrease and the output values are roughly symmetrical. Here's the scatter plot for part C. You would say that an exponential model is best because the output values change proportionally for equal length input value intervals. Here's the scatter plot for part D. This one is less obvious. I can see how it could be considered roughly linear. If I'm just guessing based on the pattern, it looks like it's probably exponential, but maybe if we saw some more data going to the left, we'd see that it was quadratic. The bottom line is, uh, I feel like we need to take a closer look at the output values to decide. We can definitely see that k of x is not linear, because the output values do not change at a constant rate for equal length input value intervals the output values seem to be changing at an increasing rate. k of x does not appear to be quadratic either, because the output values are not increasing at a constant rate. They seem to be increasing at an increasing rate. Dividing each output value by the previous output value reveals a roughly common ratio of 1.5. In other words, each output value can be roughly obtained by repeated multiplication by 1.5. Using our College Board vocabulary, we say an exponential model is best because the output values are proportional for equal length input value intervals. When we create a model based on a set of data, we can use that model to predict an output value for a given input value. However, never forget that our model can only give us a predicted value. It's not a fact, it's like an educated guess. If we have a known value for a given input value, the difference between the actual value and our predicted value is called a residual. In other words, 
a residual is equal to the actual output value minus the predicted output value. Example two, the weight of newborn babies can be modeled by a linear function for the first four months after birth. Selected values for the weight W of T in kilograms of a particular newborn baby are given in the table above, where T represents the number of months since birth. Part A, use the regression capabilities on your calculator to find a linear model of the form Y equals A plus BX for the weight in kilograms of this particular baby X months after birth. Just hit the stat button and hit enter to edit. And let's enter the input values in L1 and the output values in L2. Once your data is typed in, hit the stat button, switch to the calc menu, and choose your regression model. We were told to pick a linear regression model of the form A plus BX. So choose option eight. Before you calculate the regression model, I always suggest that you store the model as Y1. So hit the VARS button, switch to Y VARS, hit enter, and enter again. This way the regression model will be waiting for us here under the Y equals area if we need it. Hit enter a couple more times, and kabam, there's your regression model. Plugging in the values of A and B, we get Y equals 3.34 plus 0.8x. Part B, use the model found in part A to predict the weight in kilograms of this baby 2.5 months after birth. This question is asking for the value of the model Y at 2.5. We can either type this in manually like this, we could just type this expression into the calculator, or we can use the calculator to evaluate y1 at 2.5, since we stored the regression equation as y1. Uh, to summon y1, we hit vars, switch over to y vars, hit enter, hit enter again. To evaluate y1 at 2.5, simply put 2.5 in parentheses right next to it. So y at 2.5 is 5.34. That is our predicted weight of the baby in kilograms. Always remember to include units. Part C, the actual weight of this baby 2.5 months after birth was 5.5 kilograms. What is the residual for this weight? Did our model underestimate or overestimate the weight of this baby 2.5 months after birth? Remember that the residual is the actual value minus the predicted value. So 5.5 kilograms minus 5.34 kilograms. The residual value of 0.16 kilograms indicates that our model underestimated the weight of the baby 2.5 months after birth. We can use something called a residual plot to check the appropriateness of a model. A residual plot shows all the residuals for a set of data and can be used to determine if a model is appropriate for a given set of data. If a model for a given set of data is appropriate, the residual plot should appear without pattern. If we see a clear pattern in a residual plot, then the model used for the regression was not appropriate. Example three. An exponential regression model was used to model a set of data. The residual plot for the exponential regression model is shown above. Which of the following is the best conclusion about the appropriateness of the exponential regression model based on the corresponding residual plot? C. The exponential model is appropriate because the residuals show no pattern. Example four. A group of AP pre-calculus students used a set of data to create linear, quadratic, and exponential regression models. After creating the three models, the students created a residual plot for each model type, C, above. Based on the three residual plots above, which model was most appropriate for the data? Give a reason for your answer based on the residual plots above. The exponential model was most appropriate because the residuals show no pattern. 
Example 5. Mr. Passwater hopes to make it into the Guinness Book of World Records by painting the world's biggest mural on the sides of several buildings downtown. His mural will consist of many painted circles of various sizes, where each circle is painted a different color. He wants to create a model to determine how much paint is needed in quartz for a circle of radius r in feet. Part A. Should Mr. Passwater use a linear, quadratic, or exponential model in this situation? Explain your reasoning. The amount of paint needed to paint a circle will depend on the area of the circle, pi times the radius squared. A quadratic model is best for modeling area. Part B. After creating his model, Mr. Passwater uses it to purchase different special paint colors to use on his mural. In this situation, do you think it is more appropriate for the model to underestimate or overestimate the actual amount of paint needed? Give a reason for your answer. The model should be designed to overestimate, so Mr. Passwater does not run out of paint. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.